Let me call to order the uh, April 6, 2022 Committee of the Whole meeting for Borough Council. Would you rise for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, let me announce we're going to have a change of order and uh, we're going to jump to number 11 and then we'll recess for uh, another period to have another conditional hearing. So it is at this time we're going to have a presentation from the Pottstown Fire Department. Um, Chief Frank Hand, if you will. So good evening, everyone. Um, tonight we have a uh, a lot of members of the Pottstown Fire Department from all four companies, the Empire, the Goodwill, the Phillies, and the North End. Uh, we're recognizing two of the companies tonight for 150 years of service to the borough. Um, if you read the dates on them, we were supposed to do it last January, but we didn't get a chance. And as you can see, um, I really want the council to recognize that there's over 25 volunteers here tonight and paid drivers from the borough. And uh, these guys, they work hard and girls. You know, we've had a busy couple of days. And, uh, you know, I think uh, this is a great tribute to the, uh, that the borough is recognizing our, our members. So, Dustin? Yeah, um, who, you, who do you have first? Phillies. So, okay, Joe and Frank. Joe Gross is the fire chief of the Phillies Fire Company. Frank in the house is our uh, president of the Phillies Fire. All right. Um, it was funny when I moved into my house somebody had left a bunch of old commemorative glasses, and one of the glasses was from the Philadelphia uh, Steam Fire Company, and when uh, Frank came on board, it was for their 100th anniversary. And when Frank came on board, I gave, I gave it to him. So it's pretty cool that uh, we're here today and we're celebrating the 150th anniversary. Um, let me just read to everyone what is on, on the plaque. Uh, the Philadelphia Steam Fire Engine Company, the Phillies, established January 3rd, 1871. On the sixth day of January, 2021, the borough of Pottstown joins all area citizens in celebrating the 150th anniversary of our Philadelphia Steam Fire Company number one. The selfless heroism of Pottstown's bravest is a shining example of the best enduring qualities of Americans. As the kneeling fireman reminds us of the sacrifices of those who risk their lives every day to protect us, let us reflect on this anniversary and in the years ahead, honor gratitude for Goodwill's courageous efforts to protect all Pottstonians and the citizens in the surrounding area. We're glad to have you and uh, congratulations. So civil and uh, Andy Enhoff, and Dwayne, you might as well come up because Kevin had a lead. Sybil was, uh, as many know, last year Jim Smale was the president of the Goodwill Fire Company, and he passed, and Sybil was the number two person in, in the uh, Goodwill, and Andy Enhoff is the new president, and Dwayne's the past president of uh, the Goodwill. All right. Good. Well, I didn't, I didn't find a, a, a Goodwill glass, but maybe we'll have to create one for this, this anniversary. All right, the Goodwill Steam Fire Engine Company established January 6, 1871. On the sixth day of January 2021, the borough of Pottstown joins all area citizens in celebrating the 150th anniversary of our Goodwill Steam Fire Company number one. The selfless, <coughs> excuse me, the selfless heroism of Pottstown's bravest is a shining example of the best enduring qualities of Americans. As the kneeling fireman reminds us of all the sacrifices of those who would risk their lives every day to protect us. Let us reflect on this anniversary and in the years ahead on our gratitude for Goodwill's courageous efforts to protect all Pottstonians and citizens of the surrounding area. Thank you very much. We really appreciate your service. <laughs> I'm assuming 
our, our mayor, if anyone wants to say anything to the fire department, I appreciate it, but you know. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for all of your service. When I moved here, today is also a very special day for me, and you, sir, on the end, can go pick out you are of age, you may go pick out a bottle back there. Thank you for carrying that. <laughs> Ten years ago today, I moved uh, to the borough and became a Pottstown resident. And I just want to say thank you all um, for making this uh, the first time I've ever felt a sense of community. I have gone shopping with you, with the kids during Christmas. I have gone to fundraisers for kids with all of you. And I just want to say thank you all for your service um, and the way that you work with all the other departments in the borough is very amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's right. That's okay. Thank you. <laughs> and go back to our regularly scheduled meeting. Uh, but before I start with the subcommittees, on behalf of council and staff, uh, I would like to offer congratulations to Matt and Jennifer Hovey. Uh, they are the parents of a new daughter. Nora? Yes. Ah. <laughs> Enjoy. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, under under subcommittees. <laughs> oh, he's uh, great. Councilor Lebedinsky, anything for infrastructure? Uh, the coach, uh, our, the uh, infrastructure uh, reports in your packet. Okay. Some more to add there. How about transportation? Uh, reports in your packet as well. Good. Efficient methods committee, Councilor Lebedinsky. Uh, nothing major new, just um, we're just reviewing some data to see what we can present and uh, improve upon next month. Okay. And you might want to let them know you're work we're working with uh, the codes department, or uh, public works right now. All right. Ordinance review. Councilor Prosco. No meeting. Nothing. And uh, economic development and business liaison. So you have two successes coming in tonight. Good news. Let's keep them coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, tonight I want to talk about a lighting project that has been going on for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, Madam Mayor even contributed to the project for the downtown. So uh, the idea always has been to create a canopy of the Edison bulbs. If you think about what's down um, in the park in Smith Family Plaza that was first strung for the event of FET and then we decided to leave it and I think it has been uh, generally accepted um, as a good thing. Uh, so we actually took over from a business party that was trying to raise the funds, paid, took over that uh, fundraising effort, and also to coordinate the efforts of hanging those lights. So uh, Justin and I have been working with your solicitor um, and paid solicitor to have an agreement because, of course, we want to make sure that they're hung in a responsible way, but also not holding paid or the borough responsible um, should anything fall. Uh, we are doing this really to coordinate the efforts and to be able to put the lights up. We wanted to be able to purchase the lights so there would be uniformity to the lights that are being used. And we also are coordinating the effort of the installation of those lights by requirements of how high they have to be and making sure that they are gonna be installed safely. Uh, we took on this effort because we knew after COVID that the small businesses in downtown, although they probably would like to participate, might not have the financial wherewithal to be able to do it at this time. They will be responsible for running the electric, though. So their owners, or if they own the building, will the, it will be running to their buildings. The electric will be running there, and they will be responsible for replacement of the bulbs. So we're, we're going for the first hanging of them, 
but after that, they will become the responsibility of the business owners along the street. So, um, Justin, I think you're going to just work through the logistics and sort of the, the what we're going to do. Um, but <clears throat> overall, it will be paid that's leading the effort, and we will be asking for the sign-off on the hold harmless. Okay. What areas? From where to where? Yeah, so we're going to start on probably on the north side of High Street. We mapped it out. We purchased enough lights by the money that we have. We're hoping to um, get more donations by people seeing the lights and understanding that we can only start with a small portion of it. So we are planning uh, to go from about Coles Tobacco uh, down. So we also have to look for places where they can be safely strung, either through the trees or wrapped to the poles, mm -hmm. um, so that they can meet the height requirements, as well as not a long strand where they're going to dip and become a hazard. Good. So, so it's part of the placemaking and beautification of downtown. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Would you like me to stay for land banks since I'm up Please. here? Why are you here? <laughs> Let's just keep moving. Okay. Uh, so I don't really have any new news. Land bank did meet at its monthly meeting. Um, we are moving along with the fair grant. Obviously, 707 Hamilton is a project that the borough is also involved in. They did receive some funding to be able to do some mitigation efforts before the property is transferred. So we are working through those items. I can tell you that I was at the statewide conference for Pennsylvania Economic Development Association yesterday in Harrisburg. And it was interesting to me from mayors to county officials talking about just getting their land banks up and running. So you can all be proud that you were um, on the forward edge of it. Uh, because they are certainly something that a lot of um, municipalities and townships and counties are seeing the value in. Very good. That is my report. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess there's nothing more from Chief Hand. Yeah. Okay. And uh, human relations. Ms. Levingood? Or anyone? She's not here. I'm going to step in for her. Oh, please, Lisa. Okay. Um, so in April, uh, Christian and Islam celebrate uh, their holy holidays. Christians celebrate Easter, uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Ramadan, uh, Islam's holiest month, began on April 2nd and ends on May 2nd. Um, during that time, Muslims follow many rituals and traditions. Um, the next Human Relations Commission meeting will be held on Tuesday, April 12th at 6 p.m. in council chambers, and all are welcome to attend. Thank you. Uh, library, Ms. Lipsky, out there? No? All right, maybe Monday. How about the Ricketts Center, Councillor Kirkland? I'd like to highlight. Um, first of all, in March, we had 38 new members. Great. So, um, so now we're over 500. 521 members. It's awesome. Um, after school program, some things are continuing. The after school program, uh, 2.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. The uh, adult programming, which allows adults to use the facilities during the daytime, um, is, is ongoing. There's going to be an adult basketball league uh, that actually started at the end of last month. Um, the, the league will consist of three games a week. Um, and uh, soccer for success is going on still. Uh, we still have the karate program from the Philadelphia School of Korean Karate. That's from that's Monday and Wednesdays from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, the fitness center. The fitness center is, is, is great um, there. Um, that's always available. We you know we spend money going to LA Fitness and different places, but we have a really good fitness center right there in the community. Um, I, you know. I believe it's only like $15 for like six months, something like that. It's very reasonable. And it's state-of-the-art equipment, you know, that you can use and everything. It's, it's, it's a great facility. Um, it really should be utilized more. Um, the Bread of Life shower and laundry program every Tuesday and Thursday nights at 6 to 8.30 p.m. That allows people to, to, um, to you know, to 
uh, get showers and things like that. You know, people who's who's down and out. You know, to to have some you know facility to do things like that. Um, the Red Road Diamond Dance Dance Team is, for, is on Mondays and Wednesdays from five thirty to seven. Uh, youth basketball, youth basketball Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, six to eight p.m. Um, uh, programs that we're looking to institute in the future are more adult programs during the day, uh, yoga possibly down down the line, um, expanding the after school program. Um, there was actually a new staff member hired. Tyler was the lead program coordinator, and they started the first week of April. Mm. Um, some building updates. There's going to be some improvement on the uh, basketball court fencing, mm -hmm. uh, the surface to the blacktop, uh, some bleachers, and new lighting. That's the report. Good job. Staying busy. Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay, Pottstown School District, Councilor Lindsay. Okay, I'm going to keep mine short and sweet because I know the mayor has like two pages of stuff that she did. <coughs> oh, okay, don't. <laughs> Um, I just want to say one important thing, and that's the school is hiring. Hmm. So go on Pottstown, um, um, the school district's website. They need teachers. They need people in the school. If you know anybody, please have them contact them because we we need teachers and we need staff in there. So if you can, um, or if you know anyone, spread the word, share it on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you do, just make sure you send it out there because I'm sure all schools are um, having some challenges, If, but we, we need teachers. So if you can, um, go on the school website. They're, they have a whole list of, of jobs. Okay? That's all I got. Very good. Mayor Henrik, for your report. So given the hour and the length of our um, agenda, I would like to present my report on Monday, considering I left it on my desk in my office. Um, and I will do even one better. I will give a copy to Ginny so she can include it in the packet for tonight. Um, but instead of my report, um, if you would like to pass around some glasses, and I brought some for the audience as well. I have non-alcoholic beverages and um, oh, wow. for those of you up here and some select few out there, I have the real thing back here, which you can take home after the meeting. Um, and I'm going to make Don do this so I don't embarrass myself. So if you could open this for me. Don embarrass himself. Today is my 10-year anniversary of being a Pottstown resident. On April 6, 2012, um, I made an investment and bought a house and moved to Wilson Street. And the rest is history. Um, I just want to say thank you so much uh, for welcoming me into your family. This has been, um, I can honestly say, uh, with the exception of loss and family, this has been the best 10 years of my life. Um, and there's really no place I'd rather be. So I'm going to let Don open that. And Thank you so much. Oh, yay! Spray her with it. <laughs> so if you could come up and grab a glass, and I will pour to you, we can raise a glass of non alcoholic beverage. Yeah. Um, non. I just thought yes, it would be nice to celebrate with all of my favorite people. And you know, we don't want to start any rumors. So, thank you. so that's why I got some non alcoholic. Wait, <laughs> Wait. Just because you said it, don't mean they ain't going to spread it. <laughs> Only. I just love our mayor. Look, you want me to pass? I expect everyone in the audience to be holding a glass of non-alcoholic, whether you're going to drink it or not. I'd like everybody to raise a glass, please. This is what you miss out on when you don't come in person. That's right. Yeah, at least I have mine out. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, I have Sorry, Lisa. my car. I'll drop it off. 
Ooh. Oh, that's and nice. Stephanie, we're one year and one month apart of when I moved here. Hmm. That's crazy. Isn't I'm, that crazy? Mine I is. Uh, it's been an entire decade. decade. Um, I have two glasses, one for non and one for <laughs> double fist. One. You don't put your one out. All right. All right, so if every could, one could raise a glass, I just wanted to say thank well, you. Could you could just put something in. Cheers and to community. Cheers. Cheers. Community. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> you want the real thing? Yeah. I'm right. drinking that. <laughs> and that concludes my brief report. Oh, okay. Congratulations. We're all yes. going to Lisa's after this. No, I have I have it all there for you. You don't have to go. Oh, well, okay. You okay. Take a bottle on your way home. All right. Uh, well, you got to bring some to me. I have a bottle for you. Yes. All right. For my report, there's a barrel in the back, and somebody. No, <laughs> I'm just I was gonna say, really? It's not like you just. <laughs> and we're gonna tap it. Yeah. No, no, no. We don't want to do that in there. No, but if you did that, that we'd have better good. attendance. Oh, hey. Okay, Mr. Manager, what's going on? Yes, thank you. Uh, good evening. So um, just uh, one piece of information that I did want to pass on to you that uh, staff is currently working on a federal raise grant to fund the extension of Keystone Boulevard to Old Redding Pike um, and connect it with the Sanatoga inter Interchange. We're working on this grant in partnership with uh, West Pottsgrove Township, uh, assistance from, from PAID, uh, traffic Planning and Design, and Montgomery County Planning Commission. Um, the total project cost it was just updated and it expected to be around $14 million for everything, um, design, the roadway, you know, the engineering, uh, moving the trail, all of it, uh, $14 million. Um, however, since the borough and West Pottsgrove are uh, considered rural, um, under these funding guidelines, a waiver can be requested for the local match uh, for, for this grant. Um, so uh, otherwise, uh, the, the half the match um, would equate to $1.645 million, which would also be uh, West Pottsgrove share as, as well because we would split the total match of uh, roughly $3.3 in, in half. Um, our match, we would plan to fund through developer um, contributions. We have one hopefully coming in soon and also other grant funding sources. So um, at this point, the only outlay to the borough is half of the cost for the consultants to prepare the grant application, which is also being split with West Pottsgrove Township. So um, unless there are any concerns, uh, staff will plan to submit this grant on in mid-April. Hmm. So you say a match is not required or is required? We are eligible, um, I guess, because of our classification to have the match waived we don't know so we've asked them to waive the match but we we don't know if they'll waive the match until we actually submit the application and they review it okay um, but we would we have some money that will be coming to us uh, from one of the developments down there and then we're going to be looking for companion grants I mean the idea is that um, there isn't an outlay for West Pottsgrove or, or, the, or the borough so Scott Hutt and I, the manager over there in West, will be looking for other opportunities as well. Um, it's not expected due to the federal process and just how long everything takes that um, it would be built until 2029. 20, so we would have until that time to come up with the full match amount. Okay. Um, a couple other uh, items on here, a couple merging issues. So material costs are cre increasing across the board. And this goes for everything from fuel to grass seed. Um, we obviously maintain our parks every year in the spring. We make a big effort, and the grass seed has went up 75%. So just things that we're keeping an eye on um, because of the fertilizer that is, that is uh, used in, within the grass seed. Um, that's what causes the increased cost for that. Um, obviously, cybersecurity issues. Um, you know, we're aware of some of the federal bulletins that have been put out, and we're, we have put and are putting measures in place to um, protect against any kind of cyber attack. Uh, we had a good meeting with the county uh, to get training on their emergency alert system um, through Ready Monco and Everbridge. 
Um, so we're hoping that uh, if the county does select that vendor, which they're supposed to find out in the next couple months, we'll move over to that platform, which will then allow us to send um, text messages out for various emergencies. Um, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I'm just curious on that point. Yeah. When you said that, that vendor, you said vendors raise prices for everything pretty much because of the situation in the world, right? I, I didn't say that, but well, you know, but yeah, I mean, I think given everything that's going on in, in yeah. the world, um, the, all the prices are going up, especially anything associated with fuel. So fertilizer okay. is a, you know, derivative of the gas industry from what I understand. <clears throat> Uh, I was just thinking piece. because whenever like someone calls and say, hey, you know, it's going to cost more, you know, whatever. Um, do we kind of like, you know, push back a little bit? Because some there's some people taking advantage of the situation. Right, right. There's some people who have, who have inventory that they didn't spend more on the inventory that they had before mm -hmm. the situation. Right. That they're charging more on that, you, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On, on that inventory that didn't cost them any more because they didn't purchase anything new. Right. You know, so, you know, are we saying, well, is this previous inventory or am I buying previous inventory or am I buying new inventory? Mm -hmm. You know, so, I mean, that's just something that just came to my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, are we asking that question mm -hmm. when we buy these goods? Mm -hmm. is, is that? Yeah. Um, I mean, we always do our due diligence and try to find the best price uh, for, the, for the taxpayer. And uh, being a borough, we have requirements that actually, you know, require us to get three qu quotes, okay. go out mm -hmm. to bid. So, yeah, I mean, and especially for those higher dollar purchases, um, we are following those guidelines to make sure that we're getting the best price available from, and getting um, prices from multiple uh, contractors or vendors. Okay. I know there's a lot of gouging going on out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of gouging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, definitely something to keep an eye on. Mm -hmm. um, Everyone's trying to price gouge just like big oil. And then also, just another announcement, it's National Safe uh, Digging Month, so please call before you dig and uh, dial 811. Um, couple project updates, so we awarded the um, Sunstrom Field and 42 Walnut Street stormwater arch repair. We had pre-construction meetings for both of those projects. The Sunstrom Field will likely be able to get underway a little bit sooner. Um, however, uh, 42 Walnut, it's looking like sometime mid summer, late summer, to get, get that started due to the uh, material delays um, that we are getting from, from the vendor there. And uh, we are going to hold a uh, ribbon cutting for the opening of the King Street Bridge on the afternoon of April 14th. Uh, we still are nailing down the time, uh, exact time. Um, and then the bridge should be open to traffic the following day um, if everything goes well. So we would hope that uh, any of you who would like to attend, as well as the public, please please come out and celebrate uh, the reopening of the roadway after two years. Mm. What um, no time? Date, I mean, what time? We don't, we have, don't have a time. time. We're going to update oh. that. So just stay tuned, and we'll send emails and post on social media once we once we have a firm time. Um, PennDOT uh, paving. They were scheduled to pave High Street between uh, Kime all the way to the Borough Line. They are telling us now that that was pushed back to 2023. So we've got to wait another year for that. Um, reason being is uh, some work that's being done in Lower Pottsgrove Township for the installation of utilities, which has not happened yet. So they want to wait until those utilities are installed before they uh, do the paving. Uh, good news is that PICO is still on track for paving at the end of the month. Um, we don't have a firm date yet, but we'll, that's another one. Stay tuned. We'll, as soon as we have that, we'll push that out to everyone on social media and on our website. Um, that paving will happen between uh, Charlotte and um, Kime Street, and they would start at, at Charlotte Street and work their way down. It does look like as long as the weather holds out, at this point they should be out of that area in time for, for the car show. So that's kind of what we're, we're aiming for there. Good. And... Um, Lastly, uh, I'd like to congratulate, congratulate Dave Haygood um, for being selected as the Assistant Director of Public Works. Um, David came from Sunoco, uh, where he was a pipeline supervisor and worked the past four years for the borough as a service worker and more recently as the Public Works Engineering Inspector. I know that he's uh, soaking up all that he can from 
Mr. Yerger right now. Uh, he'll have his work cut out for him, but I have no doubt that, uh, that he'll be up to the task. Good. Thank you. Okay. That's it. Okay. There's a zoning relief request from Ann Anderson. Yes, there's a there's a hearing before the zoning hearing board on April 13th at 7 p.m. on the application of Ann Anderson. Uh, she's seeking a variance. Uh, she's proposing to operate a holistic day spa at the property located at 343 East High Street. That proposed use is not permitted within the downtown district. Uh, I believe this is the the corner property in the former site of the Evans Houseman and Richard Insurance business. I believe this will be listed for potential action Monday night. And as you know, you're not required to take a position, but you certainly could take a position to support or oppose the application. Okay. So that will be listed for Monday. 13, the Hill School Turf Field Minor Land Development Plan. Uh, any, anyone here? Or Oh, hi. Good evening. Good evening. My name is John Medendorf, and I'm with Pannoni Associates, the civil engineer uh, hired by the Hill School as their consultant for the project for the land development process. Um, I've been working with the Hill School for about five years now. This is, I think, our fourth project that I'm here tonight to present to you. Uh, we previously met with the Planning Commission about two weeks ago to present the project, went over the project in the comments, um, received, the con received the conditional approval um, with just one topic to talk about, specifically tonight in regard to the trees. So I'll circle back to that, um, but first I'll explain the project. <laughs> and then answer any questions. So presently, the Hill School has two turf fields up here on the section of the main campus known as the bar fields. Um, the proposed site is adjacent to the existing track as well as the baseball field, and then there's an existing parking lot right here. The field right now is a practice facility, and they're looking to turn it into a turf field with bleachers, scoreboard, and lighting um, for the football team. And that that would relocate their games from down to Dell Field up to the field site itself here. So again, this is a blow up of the existing conditions plan. So we have the existing parking lot here, the practice fields are located here, and there's the existing pavilion. About seven years ago, two turf fields were put on the other side of the walkway, and those are located up here. And then the existing track and field is located on the side of the plant. So the primary purpose of the field is for the football team. However, it will be striped for several other athletics, such as lacrosse and soccer, for their use as well. So you have the full high school size football field. Uh, there will be bleachers installed along the one sideline with a press box um, to observe the game. Um, no changes to the existing pavilion and concession stand. That will remain, and these improvements will just connect to that through walkways. The field will also be connected to the uh, existing parking lot by connecting it to the asphalt path that loops up here from the main path and cuts through. Stormwater for the project will be uh, managed by a proposed MRC basin. The MRC stands for Manage Release Release Concept, and that uh, is an alternative BMP that was approved by the PADEP several years ago for sites that don't have adequate infiltration rates. Um, being the Hill School and the local geology, uh, rock is anywhere from two to five feet deep, um, and the soils have a high clay content and have the red tone associated with them. So infiltration testing was performed out on site. Uh, there was not an adequate infiltration rate for to meet that standard um, in the ordinance, so we are proposing the DEP approved MRC base. The site does disturb approximately uh, over the next plan, but less than four acres of total disturbance. Um, so it is required to go to the conservation district and receipt of an MPDS permit. It is actively under review. It's gone through and completed the administrative review and is now under technical review with the conservation district. Mm -hmm. 
This is the version and sediment control plan that's under review. As in the improvements are limited to the immediate area of the field as much as possible. There will be relocation of the, some of the track and field equipment out of here so that it's not being thrown onto the new turf field. Um, otherwise, the majority of the site will drain um, up to the, <coughs> towards the existing fields uh, while rock construction entrance, compost filter sock, and inlet protection to capture it. Uh, the other thing to note with the existing basin is that the discharge will be connected into an existing um, sewer system that's up here from the fields um, that were previously installed several years ago. So there will be no direct discharge overland or to existing streams. Uh, we are um, designing to meet all the barrel ordinance requirements in regard to stormwater. So we're doing the reductions. Um, we're compensating for the volume through the use of the MRC um, in order to mitigate any downstream effects from the proposed improvements. The field itself is being modeled as an impervious surface, and as such, um, there is a stone bed beneath it that can store rainwater, but it's only for storage. The actual treatment will occur in the MRC basin. So the intent is here, the majority of the stormwater comes through the field, there's under drains beneath it. They uh, capture the stormwater and convey it to either end of the basin, and then from there, it's detained and managed in accordance with the state's regulations, and then discharged through an outlet structure to the existing system. We are, receipt, we are within receipt of three comment letters, um, one from the Barrow Engineer, Cedarville, in regard to the land development, one from HRG for the utilities, and one from the County uh, Planning Commission. Um, all letters are will comply. Um, there was a waiver letter provided as well. There is 22 waivers requested from the SALDO, um, but that is on par with the past projects, given the zoning district that it falls in and the campus nature of this site. Um, again, all, all comments are will comply. The intent is to work with the engineer <coughs> and staff to satisfy those comments. We don't see any hurdles on those. Good. Mm -hmm. And then I'll stop there and see if there's any questions and then talk about the one comment that came out of the Planning Commission. Um, nope. What do you say about games? Is it, is it going to be games here? Actual games here or is it practice here? No, this, this will be the football, I don't want to call it a stadium, but this will be where all the football games are held and the <coughs> bleachers for spectators. I, um, a press box for coaches for observation or videoing so of the games. Game, there is games there. Correct. Games. Yes. So not including games at that, that field down there. On, on Off a of beach? No. Okay. No. All games will be relocated up to this field. Okay. Um, parking. Yes. Um, I'm the councilman of that ward. Mm -hmm. And I, I know in the past it's been a lot of issues with parking and spreading out. To date, there are no, on this plan, there are no proposed parking improvements. The existing uh, parking lot is intended to be used, um, and then as well as any other campus parking facilities on site, just such as the parking lot done by the Dell. Okay. I'm talking right now, there's going to be parking in I do know. I do know the Barrow has reached out to the. It's always been a problem. That's a problem. Oh, understood. <coughs> they continue to be a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I do know the Barrow has reached out to the school um, because it has been coming up more and more lately, and they are in conversations about ways to remediate it. Yeah, yeah. You have to. You have to figure something out. Mm -hmm. um, and you said that there's a management system, just like the previous. Um, mm -hmm. um, is there a certain amount of time that that water is maintained within your system? The system has to drain no quicker than 24 hours, but no longer than uh, 72 hours. So between one and three days. Okay. So the maximum time you can hold is three days, you're saying? Correct. Okay. That is the accepted guidelines as the average duration between storms. So the intent is to have that drain within three days, so when the next storm is theoretically to come, it can receive that storm and energy. Normally, if that wasn't there, then it would all drain to you know, the, the, you know, the ground. But now you're capturing all that. Correct. Now you're capturing all that and you're, main, and you're maintaining it and you're isolating it and holding it for three days. Correct. Now, now there, if there's a storm event longer than three days, or really saturated, how's that, how's that going to handle <coughs> There is an outlet structure with it, so if the water rises up or there's existing water remaining into it, it will rise up, go into the outlet structure, 
and drain through the existing pipe network system. And the pipe's able to handle more than three days then? Yes, the pipes are designed to convey the 25 year storm. In the event the storm is higher, um, or there's an, an emergency situation from a stormwater standpoint, there is an emergency um, spillway where it would rise up and it would spill out here, and then again through overland relief, it would either find its way into the existing inlets or ultimately continue downstream. Okay. And are your engineers <coughs> well, again are engineers going to follow that? Yeah. Right. Yes. Yep. And we're, we're we have our letter now, and it, it, to this point, the <coughs> concert will comply. Okay. That, that's, that's the main concern I'm, I'm concerned about. Mainly the parking is going to spill out because now the game's there now. Mm -hmm. You know, now there's games up there. <coughs> you know, I, I don't know the capacity of that parking lot. Do, do you know the capacity? Of that Off the top of my head, I do not. Okay. Um, you know, that could be a problem. The mm. game's not up there. That could be a problem in the neighborhood. Mm. Um, you know, that has to be looked at somehow. I don't know. <coughs> um, okay, that, that, those are my main, main concerns I want to point out. Okay. Mm. Mm. Mainly parking in the neighborhood. I get a lot of calls on that. Um, every time there's an event going up there, I get a lot of calls. You know, I drive up there and I can see all the cars down the street. Mm -hmm. walk, parking and walking up to the event. Yeah, that's, that's something I want to put out there. No, I know, and that's, it's, um, it has been brought up, and there has been, I've been a part of some recent email exchanges where that conversation is happening on, on ways to mitigate that. Great. Any other questions? <coughs> then, from the Planning Commission, as been, we received a conditional approval to advance to tonight, and uh, to Monday night's meeting, However, and all waivers were approved with the exception of one in regard to open space trees. And that comes out of section 504. Um, and that section indicates, in areas of any developed lot where there are no buildings, one shade tree shall be provided for every 8,000 square feet of total lot area. This shall, be addition, this shall be in addition to trees required for frontage and parking lots. The waiver for, street, uh, for uh, open space trees was made because you can see it's an athletic field, and the intent is to keep the perimeter open. You know, if balls go beyond the limits or out of bounds, players run beyond. You know, there's track and field vents that occur over here. The field vents from tracks occur over here. Um, other than that, the improvements, like I said, to limit the, the disturbance to the site are tucked in as tightly as possible to just what needs to be disturbed to put these improvements in. Um, there are some planter beds and some landscaping proposed. Um, alongside the bleachers and alongside the MRC basin. The MRC basin itself will not have any trees in it. At the bottom of the MRC basin is a stone layer that holds the water as part of the management. So, you know, we do meadow grasses in it, but we don't plant trees because ultimately their root system will go down and damage that bottom layer that uh, provides the volume and the storage to meet their basin requirements. So that was, that was the intent of the waiver. Um, for the calculation, we're required um, for five trees. Um, I know there was some conversations about 22 required trees. However, that calculation was taking off of um, the overall limit of disturbance, which was almost four acres. However, uh, the borough previously granted the waiver um, for this requirement when we came in for the emissions parking lot based on the um, proposed, just the proposed area that could support those trees. So that takes out, you know, the basin, the bleachers, the pavement, and the majority of the disturbance is the field itself. So that's what we got from the 22 down to the five to make that correction. Um, so the the school is willing, you know, to either plant the five, you know, nearby or where it makes sense within these uh, improvements <coughs> on campus, or provide the fee in lieu of a $500 per trip. Mm. Um, so that was the one item that the planning commission um, kind of, you know didn't give us an answer on and you know we asked to come tonight to discuss it with council. I think there will be a further discussion. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Keller, I think we want to do a request for a proposal for a fixed base operator. Care to explain? 
Yeah, just um, <clears throat> since it's been some time since we've issued an RFP for these services, um, and also in an effort to make sure that we're getting the best services possible with taxpayer resources, uh, we'd like to seek council's approval and permission to issue a request for proposal for a fixed based operator at Pottstown Municipal Airport. Good. Any questions? Okay, we'll list that for Monday. 15 is the application of Montgomery County Recovery Pandemic Recovery Funds for $250,000 for Riverfront Park Pedestrian Bridge and uh, Embankment Restoration. Yes, these next two items, they're, they're both um, grant applications to the pandemic pandemic recovery fund by the county. There's no match required on, on either of these. So um, the first one, if you recall, for the Riverfront Park, council had authorized submission of a $200,000 Montgomery County 2040 grant, which is separate from the recovery fund and the recovery office uh, last month. And this, this grant would be a companion funding um, to that first grant and would cover the entirety of the, of the project cost. And 16 for the 800 or the uh, 8 million? Yeah, so we're also asking the recovery office for $8 million um, to uh, uh, repair and maintain the existing stormwater arch system that we have uh, in the town. Stormwater and, inf and stormwater infrastructure is an eligible expense through this program. And um, based on last year's updated report uh, of stormwater arches in the borough, it will take between uh, seven and eight million over the next several years to repair all deficiencies. Um, so this am application is, while ambitious, it attempts to retain the full funding through one source, um, and we're asking council to approve a resolution on this that will be ready for Monday night. All right, we'll list that for Monday. 17, the Schuylkill River Greenways, uh, the 2022 Paddling Film Festival. Yep, uh, I don't really have any more on, on that one. Um, I think it's something that they had, had done before. This main request is for a beer garden as, mm -hmm. as, in conjunction with that festival. Right. There's no question. We'll list that for my day. 18 is Light Up High Street. Yeah, so as Peggy mentioned, this is this is a grassroots project funded by the private, bu private business community and administered by paid Um we're looking at installing string lights in the downtown over portions of the sidewalk and over portions of the, Penn Street, the North Penn Street Alley, at least is the initial project. Um, as uh, Peggy mentioned, Paid will be responsible to work with the borough to ensure proper location and heights and address any future um, uh, issues with the business owners. Uh, the business owners are responsible for electric and we're seeking council's approval for indemnification in a form that's acceptable to the borough and also for the placements of the lights within the boroughs right away on High Street and Penn Street Alley. Good. We'll list that for approval. Uh, 19 is the Hill School commencement. They want to close Beach Street. Yep. May 28th uh, for their commencement. May 28th. Yep. Okay. That's for Monday. 20 is the Pottstown Rumble. They want a beer garden as well. Yep. June uh, 24th through 26th. Very good. Excited to have them back. We'll list that one. 21 is the Go Forth Festival. Another beer garden. Yes, and I understand that um, they will be making a request for the parade as well, but that'll that'll probably come um, next month. Okay. We'll list that one. 21 is the Go Forth Festival. Another beer garden. Yeah, um, Smith Plaza, there's one one there. Um, and then they're asking for the street, the, uh, yeah, the street fest as well on the, on the fourth. That's High Street, York to Charlotte Street. Okay. So it, it's, from what I understand, it's going to take a similar form that it did last year. Very good. That says 223 is Patriotic 5K. So you want to close Beach? Yes. Yeah, this is the uh, Parks and Rec run that they sponsor every year. Okay. 24 Play Streets, the Community Outreach Program. This is a new program, and in, in, in essence, this program is intended to create the feeling of a family-friendly tailgating party, essentially, on various borough streets. Um, so there will be games such as uh, cornhole, Jenga, chalk games, various ball games, um, will be set up in the street adjacent to Borough Parks. 
So similar to Water Wednesdays, the program will feature uh, seven nights that rotate to different neighborhoods throughout the borough. Uh, it is hoped that these events will encourage residents to come out for a relaxed night of community engagement with opportunities to feature various local organizations. Uh, mm -hmm. The idea is to expand this program in the future with more help from um, outside local organizations. Um, so we'll need to close streets. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. yes, uh, yep. And the list of streets are uh, attached in, yep. in, the, in the program. And um, just want to say a big thanks to Annie Graham and Parks and Rec, um, also the uh, for organizing this this program as well as the Pottstown Area Health and Wellness Foundation and Genesis Housing for providing the funding for the games. I think Wonderful. that's an excellent idea. Well, then you can bring approve the it village. Night. Bring the village together. <laughs> I... Yeah. Good. Will this be typically happening like Friday and Saturday nights? What what are the, what are they weeknights, Thursday. Andy? Thursdays. Thursday, Thursday nights. Nights. Okay. Yep. 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 Very good. Twenty five Reading Gravity Race. They're back again. Yep. This was just a reschedule for March thirteenth, where they didn't have great weather. Okay. Twenty six yes. police vehicles and equipment. Uh, <coughs> have the bids been open. <coughs> Uh, yes, they have, and um, we're uh, recommending the municipal award of various uh, police department vehicles and equipment totaling $13,421. Okay. List that. 27 is a bid award for exterior repairs at 707 Hamilton. We did not receive any bids. Um, this is the second unsuccessful uh, bid for this project. Um, I think given the nature of, of it being a residential project, being a smaller project, um, we can't find contractors that are interested in it. Um, so we are going to be going back. This is a grant-funded project, so we're going to be going back to the grant agency to see if um, there's, there's anything else that they can do um, to help us spend this money. Um, that's, we have the that's, money. That's really all we're trying to do is spend the money to improve the property. So we're going to talk about what our options are with them. Okay. That won't work. How about the steel overlay or street overlay paving? That'll open on the 11th. On the 11th. And as for board vacancies for HORB, uh, I guess we have one vacancy, yes. and that would be Richard Bower. Yes, yes two, two and uh, Mr. Oops. Franz would like to be reappointed. Oh, and Dick Franz. Yes, and Dick Franz. Okay, so those two for Monday. It is that time to have comments from any of the citizens present. Any online? No. None. Something. All right, Tom Nyros, please. Good evening. Um, Tom Nyhaus, East High Street, Pottstown. Um, just coming tonight to say the last time we were here um, didn't go as smoothly as a lot of us had hoped. Um, since then, there's been some a lot of internal re uh, internal restructuring um, as well as external with the organization, um, and really just want to uh, express upon upon you guys how important it is that we work together, how much we want to work together. Um, and how we have six months to have a solution um, before November, before freezing temperatures again. And, you know, we're willing to go wherever we can go, but it's going to cost a lot of money. So um, just really want to try to have a meeting, an open dialogue, and try to understand what's mutually beneficial um, and ultimately beneficial for the community. <clears throat> Thank you. Absolutely. It? There's no further citizen comments. Okay, so how about from the councilors? Uh, Councilor Banny, you're with us? I am. Good. Uh, I will save it for Monday. Oh, all right. <laughs> Councilor Kirkland, anything? Um, just a question in general. Um, you said that the, the paving for the major pavings 
or delayed till next year or something like that, so 2023 or something. Well, that's just the PennDOT paving on High Street paving. between Kime and the Borough Line. Everything else is still moving. Yes, yeah, so, and so how about the local stuff, like on local streets and stuff? All that is, is that, on schedule pretty much? or uh, That bid award is going to be open on uh, the 11th, and then you'll have the opportunity to award the Borough paving on Monday night. Okay. And I thought there was some stuff like from last year, holdover that's still coming, you know, just, you know, paving local, local like... Yes, the, the residential Pico, streets. The Pico paving um, was a, a holdover. They were supposed to get that in, and that's on High Street again between Charlotte and um, Kime, and they're supposed to get that in by the end of the month. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm talking about more local streets, though, like 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 in neighborhoods, like like where. Yeah, that's the borough paving. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're gonna open those bids on the 11th. Okay. 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 But I, I still thought that there was some stuff that was laid over from last year that didn't happen. That, that's that's going to be just, just all over. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I mean, that's generally correct. We're going to have a bigger paving um, budget this year because so it, it all has to be rebudgeted again. It all has to be rebid re from last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Yeah. No, they're not going to hold their price for a year. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Councilor Lindsay. Cause there's a, I'm sorry. Because there's a lot of people who who expected paving last summer. Understood. On their streets. Understood. That, that it was scheduled for last summer. Yeah, understood. But it didn't happen. You know, so I'm getting calls and say, well, you know, this is supposed to happen last summer. Right. And, and, I, and one of them happen. is Jackson Street. So then, you know, yeah. You know, just, you know. Right. I mean, that's. Yeah. All over. That one's on our radar. So. Okay. Yeah. Where is it? Is it about a. Um, I think Brookside and then the Hillside. Oh, and there's another one over there by. Um, so you're saying those streets have to be rebid again to, to, to do it next year or whatever? Yeah. yeah, to do it this year. Yeah. All right. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to ask about the, about the roads because it got bumpy, and especially on High Street because I drove my, I drove the bus on there. I'm like, well, this thing is really bumpy when you drive a bus. Over there, but um, yeah, I was gonna ask the same questions, but I don't really have anything. I know y'all shocked again, but I'm, okay. I'm gonna do like Lisa and I'm gonna save it. <clears throat> I'm gonna follow okay. her lead and so I'm gonna save okay. it. For my right, you save it, <laughs> Vice President. Nothing, nothing, <laughs> Councilor Prosco. Congratulations, Matt. You're <laughs> lucky you have a girl. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why would you say that? <laughs> try, try again, try, try. Mayor Henry, your comments. Um, I just want to say thank you for trying to fix the potholes in the borough. Um, I highly recommend if you are getting tires to, um, to pay a little extra for the warranty. Um, I've gotten two flat tires just driving down Wilson Street in the past week. Um, and it really helps when uh, you don't have to pay for getting those patched. So it is uh, <clears throat> something I would recommend, and it's not just from the borough. Um, there are potholes everywhere. Conchahawken has been terrible. I don't know if, Trinita, you've been driving the bus down Conchahawken. No, like, yeah, the Conchahawken streets oh. in Old City. Yes, so, yes. Um, recommend that. And um, there is a lot of events going on in April. And May, and of course, our uh, summer events. So I will be putting those out. You can attach those to uh, the packet. Uh, Very good. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, yes. <laughs> the um, college is having something Saturday. It's, yes, it's Saturday. It's in my calendar. Is it their anniversary? or? Yep. Okay. Oh, I lied. Mm -hmm. April 21st? Okay. Right. That's when we're ha they're having the fireworks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, I just want to... I'll put that all down. Okay. Oh, I got that. Good. I will f close with, once again, congratulating our solicitor and his wife on the birth of their daughter. Thank you. Enjoy. Yeah. Meeting adjourned. Yeah. Yep. We have an executive decision. No.